Hi, Sal. Hold on. I got I to gotta get this all set up, kid. Got to get it set up. There we go. And we want to change that to all messages. Hello, everybody. Just sitting up here. Salamander's trying to help. He's trying to help. You sure about that, sugar? Hello, Peach. Hello, Peach. Hi, Eleanor. Yeah, they're a little, well, they're a little vocal because I think, yep, they're delivering my laundry. Uh, I wish I had time to do laundry, but I don't. Hi, Amy. Hello. Lorelei? You want to try? I mean, pause, you'd be nice. That's right, Dad. That's right, guys. Getting a little vocal up there, guys. <laughs> yes, Peaches. Yes, Peach. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> hey, there goes. There. Jazz, sugar, bar line. <laughs> Many guys got to tell me when somebody pulls up, huh? Hey, Six Falcon 2. Hello, hello, hello. Lorelai, you don't want a brave coming over here? Hmm? Oh, I just, I'm trying to get the mander in the picture. Are you invisible, mander? Huh? Oh, you're behind that. I wonder I can't see you. Hey, the mander. Hello, Peach. Come on, Peach. Come on, Peach. Well, come on, Peach. Come on up. Come on. Yay, peaches. We got a peach? Hi, peach. Yeah, they tend to get, Eleanor, they tend to get a little noisy when somebody pulls up. <laughs> so that was my laundry being delivered. I uh, have a service to it because I don't have time. 12 birds take up a lot of time. And actually, it's pretty. In, it's relatively inexpensive too. But you won't tell them that, will we, Lorelai? Those are my shoes. They're not your shoes. No, Lorelai. You want to come up? Yeah, you leave Lorelai alone. <coughs> not coming up. Cause scare you. Hmm. Yep, Amy, they're just, uh, it's, well, that's where they, <coughs> excuse me, the way they normally get when somebody pulls up in the vehicle. They are my doorbell, actually. They are the doorbell at the sanctuary, aren't you? She goes, not me, I don't usually cry. You know, you, don't, you can't see out the window, so. Lorelai and Romeo usually start that routine. Don't they, Peach? Well, you join in some. Yes, you do. Yeah, Bob, actually, he's on a program now where he comes in the living room until he starts screaming. So 
Um, he's up to five minutes now. <laughs> five minutes before he starts screaming. He's a slow learner, that boy, I tell you. He just, it's going to take a while. Months, maybe, I don't know. But right now, the, the program is to bring him out, put him in the, the living room, in, a, in one of the cages out there, wait, wait until he starts screaming, and then put him up. I give him one warning and tell him to be quiet. He knows what that means. But doesn't mean he's going to do it. Right, Peach? What did you say, Jazzy Jazzbird? Hmm? Hmm, Jazz? You want down? Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. Well, come on down. Here comes the jazz bird. Okay, he's dancing down there. No fighting. Cause. Lorelei, cause. Hey, you two. Behave down there. You behave. You behave. Come here. Don't you go chasing Lorelei. No, we don't do that. Don't tell me you're going to do it. Don't tell me that. She just likes to bounce her head. Doesn't actually have any uh, translatable meaning except excitement. Right? Right? Whoops. Where are you going? See if we get a few more people in here. Please hit the like button. Um, I guess I could hit the like button for myself. What do you think? Cause, would you sit up and not slide down? You can do it, just don't ball your feet. Yeah. I'm going to talk a little bit about blood feathers today, but see if we can get a few more people in here. Well, we just lost one, so... What do you think? What do you think? Uh -huh. What do you think? Hello? Okay. Pizza says hello. Hello, everybody. Right, Peach? Hello. Hello. You got a peach and a mander. There's a mander. Oh, you're going to walk over that way, huh? Okay, well, that makes it easier, doesn't it? That makes it easier, doesn't it? Hmm? Yeah, so Bob made it a whole five minutes. Just amazing. Can you say hello to Eleanor? Can you say hello, Eleanor? Is that too much to ask, the Eleanor part? You can say hello, though. Hmm? Say hello. You're not going to say hello? Mm, little girl. Peaches. Yeah, nice day today. About uh, 22 degrees, 22 degrees centigrade, about 73, 74, somewhere in that range with Fahrenheit. The old system Fahrenheit. Yeah. Hey, guys. Very cause. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody's got any questions before we get on the topic? I'll gladly see what I can 
if I can answer them, right? Right there, Jazzy Gasbird. Hmm? Guys, why don't you sit on my shoulder? Hmm? You seem to have a problem sitting on this shirt. Maybe it's too slippery for you. <laughs> Peaches is working on it. She's playing a lot of the, a lot of her uh, piano, her clavier. Hmm? Playing the clavier? She feel to it? Yeah. Hi, Magda. Uh, screaming. That would be Babalu. He's in the back room and he knows we're out here. But he eats cameras. He does not like the... Uh, he does not like people talking on cameras. He's got a problem with that on phones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all tend to vocalize at sundown. It's like that poem, Rage, Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Do not go gently into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light, right? Right, girl? Yeah, that's normal. Um, usually at dawn, when the, when the sun comes up, they'll start going, and then when the sun sets, the lights confuse them a little bit, but... Hello. Hello. That's just cause. Don't panic. Don't panic. Hi, Linda. How are you doing? Jesus, can you say hello? Say hello. Oh, peaches? Okay, well, that's as good as a hello. Peaches? Peaches? Hmm? Yeah, Cause does bother her a little bit, although Cause doesn't actually do anything to her. She just... He just doesn't like the way she moves when she moves quickly. And yeah, Cause can do that. She can be sitting still and then all of a sudden she's off doing something. So that makes the peach a little nervous, doesn't it, Peach? Mm -hmm. I am preening the peach because she can't preen herself and it's a habit. You wouldn't believe how many feathers are there are that to preen. Oh, I know. I know, baby. I'm not as good as the birds are at that kind of thing, but you won't let any birds bring you, so. Basically, she can teleport. Yep. She be fast when she want to be. Doja. She's up to her eyes closing now. Oh, there's one feather that needed to go. So yesterday we couldn't come out because it was just cool enough out here with the wind blowing uh, a little more than normal, about 12 miles an hour, that uh, it sets the neighbors into putting wood into their fireplaces. So um, No, not muttering. Um, sometimes they'll go back and forth. My, my, favorite, my favorite is when... Uh, Cecil or Lorelei or Bob will start chattering and then the other one breaks in and it's just like humans talking. They go back and forth going they go back and forth like that and it, it's funny because you realize that's what we do sound like. I'm sorry Peach but there's some feathers on this side I'm trying to fix for you. Just trying to open them a little bit. And then some of them come in and they're curved like scimitars.
<laughs> yeah, a long time ago. When the world was new, I, ha- I had a pair of cockatiels. So, yes, I do know. They're great. They're great parrots, though. Okay, she's going to yell when I take this one out, I think. It needs to come out. Yeah, that one was growing wrong. Some of them I can preen, other ones just have to come out. She's had she's had to go to the vet a few times. And uh, she had surgery on her left side and had two follicles. They actually had to remove the follicles because the feathers were coming in so poorly. That's a funny thing, too. When you go to the vet, some people don't understand why it costs as much for a cockatiel as it does for a, a larger parrot. And it, it's because they're harder to work with. I mean, taking blood is a nightmare off a cockatiel because, you know, they don't have much blood. And you got to be careful how you do it. So, uh, yes. Um, let's see. <laughs> Where do they see that? Yeah, if there's a hawk in the sky, um, usually it'll be Cecil who sees it first. He's not out here, though, because we're breaking up boys and girls right now, with the exception of Salamander because of mating season. But he'll usually see it first, and then the other birds will all get involved. And they'll all, they'll all follow it. They'll get up. They'll either get up on the uh, parts of the cage to see, or they'll... Uh, climb up to the top, or they'll just sit where they are and stare, but uh, until it's gone. Usually, the one who called it out first is going to continue making the sound until it's 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 gone, or it isn't a threat in any case. Yeah, it does get a little loud out here when a hawk crop, when a hawk comes by. Um, we had one circle us last week. And that was noisy because it wasn't going away and they weren't going to stop. Yep. You silly. When, uh, when another type of bird that isn't a predator goes flying by, they don't pay much attention to it. They'll Maybe look up at it, but they don't yell or anything. And you wonder how they know the difference between a predator and a, a prey animal. Um, I got that one. You didn't even yell. Um, because of the set of the eyes. You look in the mirror, you're looking with two eyes forward. Well, when you've got two eyes forward, you're a predator. And if you're a prey animal, you have eyes set farther to the side of your head so you can see better. But these guys, you know, you can see all around, but these guys can do stereoscopic vision by just turning their eyes forward. And uh, I watched Roman do that one time. He was watching, he's watching Honeysuckle Rose. And apparently he thinks Willie Nelson is like the greatest thing since sliced bread. So he watched the entire movie, Eyes Forward. I made a point of mentioning that to, to his channel and his, uh, one of his relatives came back and talked about it, but yeah, people don't realize just how how extraordinary that is for a bird to watch an entire movie with their eyes forward. But I've seen it a few times. Um, Snowball's done it, and Romeo have done it. But there's something they just got their their attention completely on the movie. Ah, I like that that uh, mnemonic. That's good. Eyes front like to hunt. Eyes on the side I like to hide. Yes, that's that's a that's a great um, way to remember it. Of course, these guys tend to hide in plain view, and uh, the way they do that is by just flying you know, in an intricate pattern. Um, 
and because they're flying in that pattern, the, the prey, the yeah, prey animals can't see them. They may have good vision to you know most most uh, prey animals or prey animals. Most hunters actually have good vision, but uh, they still can't see these birds that are interlacing like that when they're flying away. So they can't distinguish one from the other. Are we done with the preening, or you still want more? And you're not vibrating, so she's letting me preen her a lot, and she can't preen herself, so. Hi, Doris. Hi, Basia. Say hello, Peach. Say hello, Peach. Hello? Hi, Peach. Yeah, there's a high Peach for you. Hi, Beach. Is that enough preening? Am I, am I done for a while? I'm all covered in little white stuff. Hmm? Now you don't know how many feathers you have in there to preen until uh, you have a bird that can't preen itself. And then you have to do it yourself. So, hello, Spirit Matters. You're back. Nice to see you back. Now, this is something you don't want to do, be preening the, the, the feathers below the neck on any bird, unless there's a medical reason for it. Like with her, she has the six fused vertebrae, so she can't do it. And if you don't preen those feathers, she's going to be in there getting surgery again. Oh, you want to get petted? Do you? Do you, Jazzy Jazz Bird? Okay. Yeah, I could, Amy, I could definitely introduce the birds. This is the peaches. Peaches. And down here on my lap, I'll take the phone off the thing, but I have it on a tripod to make it easier to work with the birds. But this one is the jasmine, the jazzy jazz bird, otherwise known as jasmine. And then we have. We have, this is the salamander. Now, what's funny about this is, you know, people say, well, why would you name a bird a salamander? It comes from a story by E.T.A. Hoffman, which has been translated from the German. And it's, you know, that makes him the, the head of a, a parallel world. And in, in this world, he would be Herr Lindquist, wouldn't you? But he's in love with the fire lily, and he's just looking for the fire lily. Apple cider? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know where I saw apple cider. Hmm. Trying to see what's been. Oh, uh, I don't think there's any point uh, in putting apple cider into their into their water. No, uh, that just makes the water more acidic. Um, I don't think it's going to help or hurt them, but you know, I wouldn't want somebody putting apple cider in my water. So. I, there are a lot of so-called natural cures, and unfortunately, sometimes birds die because they're going to die from the apple cider. But you know, because somebody doesn't want to do an actual medical cure, and so they try some of these well, cures that aren't medical. I'll give you an example. There was and she's going to yell when I do this because this feather has to come out. But um, I'm sorry, Peach. I know you don't like me to pull that, but normally you don't want to yank a feather. But when they're like that one. I can tell when they're growing wrong, so I don't want her back in the, to see the vet. But um, anyway, when you, you see a lot of this so-called natural cure stuff, that's because back in 1933, they passed a law where these guys could just put a label on their bottle saying, hey, the FDA hasn't approved this or anything, but, so we're not saying this actually does anything. But here, then they go, and after they say that, they go through all these things it can do. So with that disclaimer, they can say that, you know, if if you – take this potion and sprinkle it on yourself, you'll become a, you know, you'll land on another planet. I mean, they can say pretty much anything they want. Um, 
The problem is that also means they can put things in the bottle that aren't listed on the bottle. So uh, a good example of that was they found in one of these things, uh, some people like to give um, milk thistle for, for liver problems, right? Because it's listed in some of these natural directories or whatever. So they were looking at the, uh, the milk thistle in a laboratory. They were examining these. This was done in New York under the auspices of the of the attorney general there. And they they found one of the ingredients that wasn't listed is asparagus. Well, guess, guess what uh, happens with these guys? You know, asparagus can kill them. So you're buying this, this uh, if you're buying anything so-called natural, vinegar is not going to be like that. But if you're buying natural, so-called natural remedies, you don't know what you're getting. And the other side of it is uh, like, um, Aspirin, for example, aspirin comes from was originally from white willow bark. Well, that's fine. I mean, you could chew white willow bark and get an effect, but what's the concentration? How much aspirin is actually in there? Well, that depends on how much water the tree got at that time of the year where you took the bark off. I mean, you don't even have an idea what you're dosing yourself with. So enough. You definitely don't want to do that with the birds. Um <laughs> Yeah, well, they call it, uh, with apple cider, they, they claim it can do a whole bunch of things. But I'll tell you one thing I, 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 I believe it does do, but I don't think it's good for birds, is if you have, um, if, if a human being has that you know, reflux where you're coughing up acid, well, what happens there, you have a vagus nerve that goes into your stomach, and it knows how much acid's in your stomach, and then... If it keeps putting acid there, you get this reflux. So if you drink a little bit of apple cider vinegar, that nerve, which is mild, that nerve gets a signal saying, hey, there's acid coming down, and it shuts off the turn, you know, the acid going into your stomach. That apparently does work. But again, I mean, it's, that's just, it's basically part of medicine because you're actually looking at how the nerves work and that kind of thing. But um, I wouldn't give them apple cider vinegar now, and um, be careful on anything that's a so-called cure that you don't actually have vets that approve it. Yeah, what you say, what what's what's good for us is not necessarily good for them. Uh, one out of five birds will die if you give them a, a fairly good sized piece of avocado. And I say one out of five on average. It is a poison. Some birds it will kill, other ones it will just make sick. So you don't want to give them that. Like chocolate's another one. Cocoa of any type. Trying to read the, you have to look to the side at the at at um, Sugar's iPad, which she's letting me use. And don't laugh, it is her iPad. Hi, Susie Q. Hello. Um. Yeah, it's it's they they work so different. And the example I usually use is when you breathe, you do what? You use your muscles to inhale, right? Well, they don't. They use their. They don't have muscles to inhale. They only have muscles to exhale. So, if you're holding a bird and you're holding it tightly, it can't breathe because it doesn't have muscles to fight your the pressure of your hands. If you overcome the outside air pressure with your hands, they're dead. It happens every Easter with these kids that get budgies and cockatiels. So. Yes, they can't have anything. It's cocoa. Cocoa is base, the basis of sh chocolate. So no cocoa. Uh, like in, this, in that movie that upset me so much, I was yelling at the screen when they had, when Rio came out. Some friends of mine said, oh, you got to see this movie. We're, we're go watch it in the theater. So right off in the beginning, uh, I mean, here they are offering a chocolate, chocolate milk. You know, you're just first of all, milk's bad for them. They can't digest it. And then the second part of it, because they're not mammals, come on. <laughs> you know, so, and, and then Coco, Coco can kill them. So right in the beginning of the movie, they do that. And so I yell in the theater, Coco has poisoned the parrot. And then they, then they offer a chocolate chip cookie. So I yell the same thing. 
Uh, actually, the first thing I yelled in the theater at Rio was, parents have four toes, not three, you morons. What kind of animators are you? you know? um, and then what was the other thing they did in that movie? They had the so-called bird expert feeding a bird out of his mouth. No. We have all kinds of bacteria that they don't have, including E. coli is the worst. Although it won't normally come up in your mouth, but that depends on your you know, how clean your bathroom habits are. If you get something on your hands and you touch your lips, an E. coli can kill them. So you 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 got to be careful because they don't they're not built like us. They're tough out in the wild, but when they're in our in these captive environments, it's easy to hurt them. Alcohol is another one. No beer, no wine, nothing like that. Um, yeah, lots of things they can't eat. They can't eat um, asparagus. They're not supposed to eat. Uh, oh, what's the other one? <laughs> there goes my brain. Begins with an R. Rutabaga. Not rutabaga. Rhubarb. They can't have rhubarb. Um, caffeine. Yes. That's part of the caca. No caffeine, no alcohol, no chocolate. And uh, what's the other one? Come on, brain. Avocado. Yeah, their lungs are highly sensitive. Uh, like that company Carpet Fresh, it's it's yes, deadly poison to them. And so you take and you you think, oh, it says it's safe for pets. It says it right on the label. You put it on your carpet, you run your vacuum cleaner, your birds are dead. And these people at that company will not change that label, no matter how many people go after them. I mean, there have been people who vets have gone after these people, and they're just you know, we're capitalists. We'll do whatever we want. You know, it's all about the profits. So. Um, someday maybe they'll get sued and that'll change the, that'll change that, but we don't want a bird to die just so that we can sue these people. But, um, yeah, they're different, aren't they? You're going to hug me all day? What's the hugging thing for? Yesterday she was sitting on my neck and, and trying to pull my hair out, which is, there isn't that much left up there and she's yanking my hair out, weren't you? Yeah. You wanted to be out here, but it was too cold. Not too cold for you, but the neighbors are putting food wood in their fireplaces, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, feeding microgreens. There, you know, this is a fad, especially in the U.S. It's a fad country. What's the latest fad? The one that re one of the ones that's been disturbing me for a long time is. This idea, and I heard about it on what used to be a, a like an internet radio show, basically a podcast. But um, this this idea of chop, right? You just chop stuff up and freeze it. You can't do that. You have if it's going to go in the freezer. You have there's if you look it up online, there's a university down in the south. I think it's in North Carolina that that specializes in food preparation or preservation. So if you look up Food Preservation University, you'll find it. And they will tell you that you cannot just take and things and freeze them. You have to blanch them before they go in there. And it tells you how long for what particular, you know, whether it's peas or corn or it's uh, greens, how long they have to be steamed before you can put them in there. And if you don't, people think that that stops bacteria from growing. But it doesn't. That's why, you know, if you buy meat and you put it in the, in the freezer, it, it's got about a 30 day. After that, you really should toss it out because bacteria still grows. Um, somebody asked a question here. Uh, Greens are greens are okay, although I will give it a caveat. Um, when I buy anything like that, I get it from Costco. I'm not promoting Costco. I don't work for Costco. 
But the reason is, if some, if if they, if the listeria or, or salmonella or botulism or something that gets on these greens, which is often happening here in the U.S., they're going to tell you. They're going to call you on the phone line. They're going to send you a text, and they're going to email you. Get, don't use it. Bring it back, or throw it out. Whatever. Bring it back. Where if you go to the local grocery store. I don't know if they care or not, but they aren't going to tell you when they have something on the shelf that they're pulling off the shelf because it has listeria. It could have listeria. Okay. So um, the, that's a problem with greens. Uh, if you're going to put them in a pressure cooker, which is what I do, is I, if I have any greens they get, most of the greens are going to get pressure cooked anyway. That's going to take away some of the nutrients, but then I put pellets back into the mash. So, the, you know, that balances it out. Right? Right. They like the taste of the pellets anyway, so. Right, girl? Yeah. Mm hmm. You just want to sit there, do you? Yeah, eight pounds would be pretty big. Uh, you're talking around three pounds for a. For a uh, macaw, like a blue and gold or a scarlet macaw, and you can go on an umbrella, it can get as low as in the 400s, depending on how they were raised, how well they were fed when they were young. I've got umbrellas at almost 800 grams, and then I have one cause, Kazi up here. Um, whoops. Yeah. Cause. She's only, she was weighed in today at 424 grams, and that's about where she sits most of the time, so. Yeah, cockatoos, you know, from, um, you know, the, the palm cockatoos a lot larger, but you don't see many of them. Um, from the Sarams, usually called the Moluccan here, but it's 1,500 islands in Moluccan, in the Moluccan, and these guys come from the Isle of Saram. But anyway, um, they weigh a little over a pound, somewhere in that range. Females a little less. Um, and the umbrella's down in the 400 gram range. From 400 up to 800. Uh, tritons are nine, between 8 and 900. Uh, graders are in the 1100 range. Lessers are in the 400 range. That's about. And the other ones I don't know offhand. Oh, thank you, Amy, for the super chat donation. Appreciate it very much. Can you say thank you, Peaches? Can you say thank you, Amy Peaches? Say Amy Lulu, thank you. Can you say hello? How about a song? Can you do a song? Peaches, you want to do a song? Okay. Hello? Okay, you say hello. Okay. No song? Not yet. Sing later. Okay. Whoa. Hey, hey, let's not eat. Let's not eat the uh, iPad, please. You can come over if you want. Just don't eat the iPad. Yeah, he did have a. He had a problem with his tail before. Yeah, well, the problem with his tail is he's got a twisted pelvis, and uh, it doesn't take much for the tail to go awry because he, his right side of his pelvis is twisted to the at a ninety degree angle. And I could show you that X ray, except that you know we don't we can't afford to have the fifty dollar a month service that allows you to show videos and put up screens and pictures and all that. So, I mean, six hundred dollars a year is a bit bit much for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it costs to feed you guys in one month, right? Yeah. What do you want, little girl? You know, if I don't pet Sal, he's going to get off my lap. And you came right over when Sal came down. Salamander will let you pet him as long as you keep petting him.
Well, you know, uh, uh, Susie Q, the reason they don't, there's a reason that they don't, haven't taught the metric system here in, you know, to the general public. It's because they want you to buy, you know, it's a quarter pound hamburger. Well, four ounces isn't all that much. So if they said the, the McDonald's four ounce hamburger and you go, oh, that's not even, that's not that much, right? But when you say quarter pounder, it sounds big. So they use it to manipulate by, by saying that kind of thing. Where when you're converting from, you know, grams are easy. <laughs> you know, um, you know, a thousand grams is a, you know, is a, yeah, or, um, come on, brain. <sighs> Trying to think here. But everything's done in tens, right? So it's easy. Where if you have to do like how many, how many bushels in a peck, or is it how many pecks in a bushel? Nobody can tell you that. But that's a measurement in the English measurement system. And even the English don't use the English measurement system much. So, Yeah, um, when I took Salamander in, when I, just after he was coming in for his intake exam, uh, Dr. Jenkins, I, I said I wanted x-rays, and uh, yeah, so um, he came back with eight x-rays, because he had never seen uh, a bird with that twist in their, in their uh, pelvis. And the thing about it is, it's amazing he's alive, because to live with that kind of a uh, twisted pelvis is not easy. But he 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 does really well. He, he's a bird. He likes living. So that's the key. How much uh, we do a quality of life test, you know, frequently, and just to see how well they're doing, and if they're physically how they're doing, and then uh, behaviorally how they're doing. You can't read their minds, but you can look at their behavior. If they're engaged, if they're, uh, if they're, they're being social, they're playing with toys, um, they're not just sitting. Like, like Peaches, you know, she, she doesn't have much range of motion. She looks like a turtle walking around, but <laughs> hello, but she's engaged. And when there's anybody on the screen, she wants to be involved. And she likes when somebody new comes up, she starts going, hello, hello. She loves to be engaged, don't you? So that, that QOL tells us a lot. Now, they use it in some shelters to decide whether they're going to you know, euthanize an animal or not. But, you know, it is the right way to look and see how they're doing and to be able to say, well, I need to concentrate on this or concentrate on that. Um, right now, Peaches is uh, Peaches is one of those I have to watch about giving to uh, giving her um, medicam, you know, anti-inflammatory sometimes. So there's lots of ways to do donations. Hold on a second. I'll see if I can help you with that. Um, not sure. I can't see my screen. Oh, there we go. I have to lean over. <laughs> I can't see the screen. There's sun here, and I can't, I have to fix the. Uh, we have a, a an umbrella that I got to do the work on before it gets hot. Um, uh oh. Well, this is interesting. I set this up to work and it ain't working. That's typical. Yeah, I have, let me see. Let me grab this tablet for a second. Whoops. There we go. Uh, 
I hear you, girl. There's so much dust on the screen. I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Oh, now I hit the auto lock. Nope, ain't going to work. All right, I give up on that. I figures I set that thing up on here and it's not working. Not going to fight with that thing anymore. Anyway, where are we? Get that off my screen so I can see what's going on. Yeah, you can always go out to our website, chloesanctuary.org, and hit the donate button. Um, I set it all up so I could just hit something on here about a tiny work, and that's the way it goes. I guess I'll have to put it on WordBoard, won't I, girl? So let's see if there's any questions. Thank you, Eleanor, putting that up. Yeah, PayPal is better, and it's it's um, paypal.me slash Chloe Sanctuary. And there's also a Patreon, too, which is just patreon.com slash Chloe Sanctuary. But let's take a moment and talk about um, blood feathers, if that's okay. Um, you need to know how to take them out yourself. Now, you don't have to do that every time. But, and when I say, the, the key thing is that when you, if you've ever cut an artery on yourself where your blood starts just pumping out, well, that's what happens if you have a blood feather. Now, what a blood, all feathers, when they're growing in, have a little blood in them, okay? So, that's normal but when they start growing out longer and that you can see the blood's going all the way up what can happen is it's ar arterial blood there's basically uh, a full flow of blood in there so if it breaks then they're going to start squirting blood out now if you have that situation the easiest way to solve that is to take hemostats preferably ones that have that little divot at the end that goes to, it looks like it um makes a little pyramid and it sticks together and you clamp it down near the base of the feather where you don't see that keratin coming up, there'll be a little sheath. And then, you know, the feather comes up and there's a little sheath around it. You want to go above the sheath and you want to pull it out from there slowly. Now you need to talk to your vet and have your vet show you how to do it. Now, if, if you have a situation where there's a broken feather like that, and it's not, it's just a little tiny bit of le is leaking out of it, you can probably have time to go to the vet and have them do it. And if you can do that, that's that's great. Uh, as long as you have somebody to watch the bird. Because if you're driving on and the bird's sitting in the back and you can't see it and it starts to bleed heavily, you know, they can't replace their blood like we can. They don't have the marrow. They, their, their actual red blood cells replicate. So if you've got someone to help you, you can take the bird to the vet and have it removed. And the reason you want to do that because it's like having a cut on an artery. All right. If it's bleeding heavily, then you're going to need to pull it. So you go to your vet and say, show me how to pull out a blood feather. Okay. But, at, you know, and I'm not a veterinarian. I've done a ton of them. But still, you want to have a vet show you because they're professionals. You know, they had to go to school for eight years and then another two. And then, you know, you're talking like 14 years to become an avian vet. So you want to, you want to see them for this. But... 
You want to know how, because you could save your bird's life. And there are birds that die every day from, you know, a blood feather that somebody couldn't pull. And I've had to do it. Oh, I had Simone, who's no longer with us, but she's one of our last rehomings. Actually, she was second to the last birds, and we we don't rehome anymore. But um, for we just can't. It's just really hard with people. They take them, they don't know what they get, and they end up having to bring them back. But uh, she had a broken blood feather, and I pulled it. And then a couple of weeks later, she walks up to me, and she's sitting in front of me. I'm sitting in a chair. And she puts her wing out. Now, it was the same wing that had the blood feather problem, but it's actually the other side that had the problem. So she was using the wing out symbol. And the best I can say it, she was telling me, I have a problem. Check it out. So I looked, I found the blood feather, and then I pulled it. Now, it seems scary, but feathers do come out all the time. The big issue is you don't want to yank. So your vet will show you that you, you clamp down. And then you slowly pull. Now, the other thing you may have is you may have the bird turn around. And if it hurts, because sometimes it does, it depends on how new the feather is. Um, they may turn around and try to bite you or something. Because, I mean, what what are you going to do if somebody does something that hurts you, right? Um, so you have to be prepared for that. And either you're just going to tough it out or you're going to create a method where you've got somebody to help you. They they keep the bird engaged or they towel the bird or whatever is necessary. I can't towel them. I mean, I can't towel them because I had to teach them because it's just me here. So uh, since the pandemic, I haven't been able to bring in any volunteers. There's not exactly any space to, to create like a six foot distance between me and somebody else. So, um, so anyway, uh, that's the basics on it. You're going to be pulling a feather. The feather is going to be sitting like that. You're going to get above that little piece. You can see the little line where the follicle is coming out. You get above that. You clamp down on it. And then you're going to pull like this slowly. So you pull and you're not going to go like this at all. You're just going to go steady, steady, steady pull and have your vet show you, okay? Ah, so much dust on the screen, I can barely see it. I need to remember to bring something out to clean the screen. Uh, Christy, yes. Um, everyone that can fly does. Moralize a flyer, causes a flyer. Salamander, will he'll, he can fly just a short distance because of his tail. He, he can get about three feet and then it, at a 20-degree like angle to the floor. Um, Lucy is a flyer, but she doesn't realize it, but she is. I mean, she's done it a few times. The thing is, if they don't learn it when they're young, <laughs> they don't know, they don't know they can fly. This one can fly, but she doesn't really know it yet either. Um, and if I had more time, I'd be teaching her how to fly, but time's, time's a tough one. I got a, a lot to do, so she knows all the veterinary behaviors, don't you, girl? She's taught me pet my beak, pet my beak. Haven't you, girl? Pet my beak. Yes, Snowball and Bob can both fly. Snowball is more likely to do it. Bob can do it. He will occasionally fly. Um, <laughs> yeah, Cecil only flies when uh, when I trim his nails. That's right. I, I take him in there and he's right over to the sink. And I bring him back to the perch and he puts his foot right out. Okay, do my nails. No, nah, Peaches tries, don't you, baby?
Yeah, they're all, let me see, let me give you guys a, a view of what's going on in here. So if there's any questions on blood feathers, I do have a an article I wrote about it too, so I can send you that. But... And you, what are you doing down there? Where's, where's the Lorelei? Oh, there's the Lorelei right in front of me. Peach is mumbling. Peach is you mumble. Peaches. Peaches. I love you too. I love you too. There is a join button if you want to join and you know, help support the same. Just hit the join button and pick your level of support. Right, Peach? Huh? Yeah? Sounded like you were talking Australian there. Good day, Peach. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you for that super chat donation. Oh, Peach, I found another feather in the wild. You don't want me to take it out either, do you? All right. Oh, I think it came out anyway. It did. It wasn't growing right in there, baby. Sorry. Peach has... Yeah, yeah, having birds in the same cage is kind of scary. That um, I say that because I've seen I've seen the uh, aggression happen. You know, it happens. Um, it kind of sneaks up on you. It'd be little things if you're really paying attention. You'll notice if the one will start stopping the other one from eating. Or it'll look like it's playing with the other bird, but it's blocking it from food or water. That's how it usually starts. But it can start with a little bit of feather. Um, I know, Peach. I had to get that one, too. Whoops. Didn't mean to throw that in the water, though. Um, so keep your eyes open if they're in the same case. That's for sure. I don't do that. But still, it might work okay. It depends on the birds. Okay, it's nice that you took a picture I didn't ask you to, but I'm trying to, here we go. What you doing, Peach? Peaches. Yeah, salamanders had blood feather problems. Um, Lucy has, Cecil hasn't, um, Laurel, I had one, uh, Gina, let's see, how do you, do you know how to tell the difference between a male and female cockatoo by their eyes? Um, no, I've never seen it where a male can look like it has a female's eyes, but females can sometimes look at like a man, a male's eyes. And the reason is if they don't get enough iron in their diet, their eyes don't, their, their colors don't lighten in their eyes. They don't get lighter. The female has a lighter eye color. Um, but it's not true if they didn't get enough iron in their diet. So you got to have the iron to make that difference in coloration. So. Yeah, these birds all enjoy going to the vet. I, you try to make that the most pleasant experience for them that you can. Um, you don't want them to be horrified. Uh, I have one bird here, Roman, that he's not going to the vet without being terrified. So 
Uh, he's terrified of everything that's, that's more than a, a couple of feet away from his cage. I get him into the kitchen to do his beak. Yeah, I, Roman's a paranoid, but I do his beak and his nails. Um, and he's a sweet bird. I mean, he really does love people, but he's just scared of, you know, scared of his own shadow. And the reason for it is they, that someone, I don't know who, who did it. Obviously, a vet did it, but there are four feathers that don't grow in now. And they're both primaries and the same ones on both sides. So I was obviously done by someone. And, uh, and he doesn't have a good sense of balance. And when you can't stand, you know, you, you keep falling over, you're not, you're not a, a bird that feels secure. So Peaches thinks she's uh, on tour. Oh, yeah, she does. Oh, God. She goes to the vet and she's got to get everybody paying attention to her, don't you, Peach? Yeah, she would say hello to just about anybody. I know. You want down. Come on, baby. Where do you want to sit? Well, you decide to sit somewhere. Well, you want to sit there? All right. Oh, you don't like that, huh, Trevor? Mm. You don't like that? Why? You don't want her sitting on me? <laughs> You're a nut. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should teach you to do that. I've got pictures of her holding a plastic fork. Can we get you to sign autograph speech? You can just make an X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first thing I teach a bird is to target, and then, then to, you know, then to step up, and the next, all the other things I start teaching them are veterinary behaviors, because they don't need to be scared when they go to the vet. Right, Peach? Right, Peach? Right, Sugar? You want to go up on my shoulder? You can go up there if you want. This is what you want to do. Almost time for us to, ah, okay. Feathers in the face. What are you doing? What are you doing? You want down here now? Okay. Yeah, that's a good girl. Jasmine, you're a good girl. It's just about that time, folks. If there's any other questions, feel free to shoot them at me, and then we're gonna and we're gonna play out here, aren't we, guys? Huh? Are we gonna play, cause? Hmm? Huh, cause? Does cause want to play? Hmm? Amy Lulu, that's uh, funny because they just watched um, Avatar yesterday, <laughs> didn't you guys? I see you. The boys are the boys. Cecil is uh, starting to calm down. He was really out of it in the beginning. Bob is no longer sitting on wiffle balls. Um, so maybe, maybe in another couple of weeks, I'll have start phasing the boys in and we'll have a group again. But uh, I got to be careful. I don't want anybody else getting bit. So, yeah. And then Pippa comes out with the boys. She's the honorary boy. I guess you could say she's a, 
Um, I think it's honorary boy works. <laughs> Just like Salamander is an, uh, an honorary girl. Doesn't look much like a girl, though. It's just that Bob and and uh, Cecil both chase him, so he doesn't want to come out when they're out here. So if, you know, I have to bring a super soaker in here to get their attention. Um, if they're going to be attacking each other, the only time I use a super soaker is when they're attacking each other. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it just because they're doing something else. It's got to be something dangerous. So. Positive punishment I uh, use only when I have to. Positive because I'm adding something and punishment because I'm reducing or extinguishing a behavior. Those are technical terms, okay? People think positive punishment. How can it be positive if it's, if it's punishment? Well, you're not using ABA terms. ABA terms, positive punishment, is just adding something to reduce or extinguish a behavior. If, if you say um, positive reinforcement is adding something to maintain or accelerate or increase a behavior right 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 like if she cries like this and i pet her beak just a little bit and stop and then she cries and i reach up and pet her and she cries and i reach up and pet her i have been adding something that's going to definitely increase that behavior she's going to start whining more <laughs> okay but if I pet her beak when she's not making a sound, then she can learn to just look at me to get her beak petted and not have to whine for it. It's what you reward. You get what you reward. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for being here with us. And we're going to... Oh, thank you so much, Spirit Matter. And I hope I see you all next time. Uh, it'll be next Monday. We'll be out. Unless we do a snap one. If we do, we'll put it up on our webpage, our, our YouTube webpage, that we're doing a snap live. So um, thanks again for coming. We're going to head off. And thanks, Amy and Eleanor, for helping out. Oh, you too, Ellie. You too, Ellie. We're going to sit out here and we're going to play. And then the boys will come out. So, And they'll play. And I'll, the boys and Pippa. And Pippa. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Our pleasure indeed. Bye, Eleanor. Bye, Amy. Bye, everybody.